There are many ways to add color to your black and white images in Affinity Photo. Today, we'll look at several common methods. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent, and today we're talking about colorizing black and white images in Affinity Photo. Now this is still mostly a manual process if you're just using Affinity Photo and not using any external tools. But before we talk about some methods for doing this, let's do a brief review of what black and white actually means. Now typically digital images are made of combinations of three colors, red, green, and blue. These are the channels, the red, green, and blue channels, and each channel can have a value of zero to 255. So here I've shown red, green, and blue, and we get red when the red channel, the first channel has 255, the maximum value you can have, and zero in the other two channels. Similarly, green has zero red, full green at 255, and zero blue. And blue has zero red and green and full blue. Now the complement of red, green, and blue are cyan, magenta, and yellow. You can see that the values here in the channels are the opposite of what they are on the other side. So cyan has 0, 255, 255, whereas red had 255, 0, 0. I won't go into too much detail here on how this works, but if you want a more complete explanation of how this works, be sure to check out my recent video on channels. Now, since we're gonna be working with black and white images, we should understand what does black and white actually mean? Well, gray happens when we have red, green, and blue values all the same. And you can see here when they're all zero, we have black. When they're all 255 down at the bottom here, we get the color white. And when there's some other value in between, we get a level of gray. The lower the value, the darker the color is. So here I just have some example grayscale values, and you can see the red, green, and blue channels are the same in all of them. At the black end, it's all zero. At the white end, it's all 255. So in a true black and white image, every pixel in your document will have values that look like this. Now here I have two example images, and a lot of people might call both of these black and white, but really only the image on the right here is truly black and white. I'll use the color picker here and I'll hover over some pixels. If you look at the value, you can see it's all the same. It's all 53 on this pixel here. If I go somewhere else, it's all 152. Somewhere else, it's all 31. Now if we look at this other image here, just by looking at it, you can see it has kind of a slight hue to it. Let's see what some pixel values actually are. So you can see this pixel has different values for the red, green, and blue. They're slightly more red than green and blue. Same thing over here, red 34, green 25, blue 20. And same thing down there. Now I know this image on the right is fully black and white because I actually converted it to black and white. Let me show you a couple methods for doing that. So I have this image on the left here and it's quite colorful. Let's look at ways we could convert it to black and white. Let me copy it here. One thing we can do is use an HSL adjustment. So I'll select this image here. I'll select the adjustments and I'll choose HSL. This stands for hue, saturation, and luminosity. And what I can do is I can dial the saturation all the way down. So a fully desaturated image is black and white. Now if I view the pixels, you can see they're all perfectly gray. Some are darker than others, of course. That's how we see the different shapes. But you can see that the red, green, and blue values are all the same across the channels. Another thing I can do is add a black and white adjustment. So I'll select the image again. And that's another adjustment layer here. So I'll select adjustments and I'll select black and white. Now there's various controls here. We won't go into what they mean, but let me just close this for a second. And the thing that's really important to notice here is that these images actually look different. You may notice that the black and white image on the right is a little bit brighter than the one on the left. You can see this really clearly if you look at things like the phone here. So this phone is practically white on this side. On this side, it's kind of gray. And we see that with the wall and some other objects too. Now the reason this happens is that we have so many possible colors we can use, but when it comes to black and white, we only have 256 values. So if we have an image with millions of colors in it, we really have to throw out a lot of data to fit it into 256 levels of gray, zero to 255. And there's no one true method for converting a color image to black and white. It's really gonna depend on your needs and what looks best in the image. Now when we go from color to gray, we're throwing out lots of information. If we're going from gray to color, we actually have to add in information to our image. So let's look at ways we can do that. There are many ways to colorize a black and white image, and we'll look at some of them in this video. I want to show you a couple on this slide here, some ways we can use blend modes and some other techniques. So you have these gray circles here, and let's say you want to color them so they look similar to this circle on the right here. Well, a common way to do that is to use blend modes, and there are a couple that are good for coloring. So let me try that. So I'm gonna take a circle here, and I'll just drag it over my sphere, and I'll line it up. Now my circle is blue. What I can do is pick a color that kind of represents this sphere over here. So let's do that color picker for that. I'll choose somewhere in the mid-tone. So with this ellipse selected, what I'll do is I'll change it to the color blend mode. So let's do that. 
So this is what it looks like with the color blend mode. And once you apply it, you can move the color around to see if you can get a better match. But you'll notice it's still not quite perfect yet. And that's just kind of a compromise you're often gonna have to do with colorizing grayscale images. You'll have to try different techniques to see what looks best. So let's do another example and let's look at the soft light blend mode. Once again, I'll choose this color. And let's try the blend mode soft light. It captures the darkness a little bit more, but still it doesn't quite match the color there. We can try the multiply blend mode. I'll select my red. And let's try multiply. It would also be good on this one to adjust the color and see if we can get something that looks closer to it. So these are some methods we can do with the blend modes. Now another method is to use a gradient map. So I will select this circle here and that's an adjustment. So let me select the gradient map adjustment. Now I talked about this in a previous video, but what a gradient map is going to do is map colors to our black and white grayscale levels. So it's going to map the red to the dark parts of our image, the blue to the bright parts of our image, and the gray to the midtones. Now this is the default color scheme, and it's not that useful by default, so let's change them to something more useful. So I'll select red, this is gonna be the dark color here. So I'll select the dark part of the sphere. Here's the green, I'll select the midtone. And then for the blue, I'll select the highlight here. And we have a gradient map, you can adjust it after you make these changes. So I can drag the circles around to get more or less of a point light there. I can go back and I can edit my colors a little bit. And we're not just limited to three points either, we can always add more. So I can click here, and I can drag it up to put more in there. So the gradient map worked pretty well in this situation. But a lot of times in real life, you're not going to have these nice clean gradients that let you put colors in so easily. Finally, we can just manually paint over our shape. So with this object selected, I'll add a pixel layer. And then what I'll do is I'll go into the pixel persona. And I can choose a paintbrush. I'll choose a solid paintbrush in this case. And I'll just make a circle. I'll resize it a little bit so it fits. Now with my brush selected, what I can do is I can select something called Protect Alpha. And what this means is that I can only draw on the pixels that already exist. So if I change the color of my brush, notice I'm only painting on that area. If I turn off Protect Alpha, I'm painting everywhere. So let me undo that. So I'll turn Protect Alpha back on. The really cool thing about Protect Alpha is I'm just limited to my shape. So I don't have to worry about going outside of the lines. Now let me get back to a better color here. I'll choose this red. And let's color it in. What I can now do is choose a soft brush. And I can select colors that work better here. You'll want to experiment with the opacity and flow here. Let me turn down the opacity a bit. The challenging thing about this one is it's really going to depend on your painting skill. It does require some um, experience in this area. You can stack more pixel layers on it so you can non-destructively paint too. I'll hold Alt to sample the color from my reference image here. I'll paint here. Remember to turn off Protect Alpha if you're going to paint on a new layer. You can also use the smudge tool here to get the shape looking better. So the paintbrush is another method you could use to color in an area. And you could also experiment with the blend modes and see if that makes it look better. Let's apply some of these methods to a real life photo now. So I have this nature photograph here. Let's start by colorizing this tree and let's look at one method to do that. Now I'm gonna use a selection brush here. And the first thing you wanna do is get a good selection of your object. I'm not gonna focus too much in this video on how to make the perfect selection, but I'll just show you some basic methods here. I don't really want the trunk, I just want the leaves. So I'm selecting the leaves here. So what I'll do now is I'll click the refine button. And that gave me a pretty good result off the bat. I think I'm happy with this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna output this to a mask. So in the output over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select mask. I'll click apply. And now we've masked our whole image. We don't really wanna do that. Let me toggle off the mask for the moment. I'll rename it tree. Let me create a pixel layer to paint over this tree. So I'll add pixel layer here. I'll call it tree. And now let's select the paintbrush. And I'll do a solid brush to start. Let's find something that's really solid here. Now a good way to start these things is to just pick a basic color to begin with. You can always fine tune it later. And it's also really hard to know what your colors are gonna look until you have more of them on the screen. So don't get too hung up on picking the perfect color right off the bat. So what I can do is I can apply my mask to my pixel layer here. And now when I paint on my pixel layer, it'll just be limited to that area that the mask shows. And if I want, I can select my mask and I can actually clean it up a little bit. So this is what my mask looks like. If there are parts where you think it could look better, you can zoom in here. If you paint in white on the mask, it'll reveal more of your pixel layer. So you can clean up the edges if you want. So this would be the kind of touch up work you could do if you wanted to make it look perfect. But for this video, I won't focus too much on that. Now for this first tree, what I'll do is I'll try the blend mode. So let's see what looks good here. I can choose multiply, it's a little dark. There's soft light, which isn't too bad. 
hard light. Now the thing is, once we select something like hard light, what we can do is we can go back to our brush. And then we can choose something like a soft brush. And then you could go and add a little more variety to your colors if you wanted to. Maybe you want to put in some yellows. We can add a little bit of variety in here. You can also use a smudge tool to mix things up a little bit. So this is one tree we have roughly blocked in. Let's look at a different method for the grass. So with my selection brush again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the grass down here. And again, you can just make a rough selection and then you can clean it up later because we're going to create a mask for it. So let's mask this out. I'll call this grass mask. Now one thing you can do is take colors from an image. So let me place a reference image in my photo here. I'll go to File, Place. And I downloaded this grass reference here, so let me open it. So this image has some great colors in it. Let me expand it here. What I can do is I can take this image and cover my grass with it. Then I can take the mask I just created for the grass and apply it to that image. Let me turn it on. So now I have the grass limited to that area. And if you had the rights to use this image, maybe you could just leave it like this. But you can also, of course, change the blend mode. So with the grass reference selected, what we can do is choose the different blend modes. So multiply is an option. Hard light might be an option here. But something like this, you can select it and you can dial down the opacity so it's not as extreme. You can also try color, although that looks a little desaturated to me. I like the way linear light looks. I think it's a good starting point. And what you can also do is add an HSL adjustment again to it. So let me choose the adjustments. HSL. And if the saturation is too crazy, you can go and you can turn that down. And you can blend it in a little bit better. So there we've colorized the grass. So before, after, before, after. Now the sky has lots of very dark areas to it. Let's see how we can address that problem. So first I'll make a selection of the sky. So I roughly selected the sky. Let's mask it out. So that's our sky mask. Let me now create a new fill layer. So I'll select layer, new fill layer. And I can change it to some color that looks roughly like the sky. Let's choose that. I'll apply the mask to it. Turn the mask on. Now we have our sky here. Once again, if you see problems with your mask, you can just clean it up a little bit. I'll do a quick little clean up here. I didn't notice that tree got knocked out. And maybe over here, I'll just clean up a little bit. Now, if you want to lighten something up, a lot of times the screen blend mode is really going to do a good job of that. So with the fill selected, I'll change this to screen. And you can see now we have a blue sky. It looks kind of boring though, because it's all just one color. We can actually apply a gradient to it. So I'll select the gradient tool. I'll drag down. I'll reverse it. Now by default, it gives us this dark color. Let's try another color up there. We can do another type of blue. I think that bottom one's a little too aqua-ish. Let's try something different down there. So with this blend mode of screen, we've gotten a much better job of getting color back into the sky here which was very dark to begin with. Now in this last tree, let's try a gradient map and see how that works. So I'll select the tree again. And I'll mask it out. Now I'll add a gradient map adjustment. So that's an adjustment here. I'll click on that. And select gradient map. Now with an adjustment, we can actually apply a mask to it. So I'll take the mask I just created for this tree here. And I'll apply it to the gradient map. So when I turn the mask on, our gradient map is just limited to this area here. Now I can choose better colors for the gradient map. So let's choose some type of dark green here for the shadows. Do another green here for the midtones. Let's give it a little yellow in that midtone there. So I'll choose my color blend mode. And we can always go back and tune up our colors here. A lot of times trees are actually more in that dark yellow than the green range. So here's our result here. And I don't quite like how this tree is looking. So this would be a good time to go and refine it. Perhaps try another blend mode or some other colors here. I think this yellow with screen looks a little bit better. And this will also be a good time to clean up your masks. Because a lot of times the edges are going to make the effect look worse. Now there are many new AI tools for colorizing your images. I'm making a video on some of the free ones, so be sure to subscribe to my channel to be notified when that comes out. And of course, if you have any questions on this video, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.